Good morning, guys. It's me, Puppy. It's really good to see you. Um, I saw some of you guys um, in the lobby in the morning. Do you like my new mask? It has dinosaurs on it because you know why? I don't like regular bones anymore. Now I like dinosaur bones. So if you want to bring me some dinosaur bones, that would be really amazing because that's my new favorite treat. Okay, guys. But the only thing is, you probably have to go to like Wyoming because you need to go on a dinosaur dig to find dinosaur bones to bring home to me. Okay, guys. Um, so not a big deal. Maybe we could do a field trip there. I don't know. We'll have to see. We need like a magic school bus to get us over to Wyoming so we can go on a dinosaur dig. Okay. I think that would be a lot of fun. Um, anyways, I better get Mrs. Erica before I get in trouble again. And then she's going to tell me that I can't come on the video because I talk about things that don't have to do with technology class. Um, I better get her. Uh, good morning, second graders. Hello, welcome. Puppy's very excited. He did get a dinosaur mask. And so now he thinks that he could get dinosaur bones as treats. But where am I supposed to get dinosaur bones? They don't sell them at Petco. They don't have them at PetSmart. So I tried everywhere. So I think, Puppy, you're going to have to just have regular dog bones. Oh, I really wanted dinosaur bones. We'll see, maybe. Um, so welcome. I hope everybody had a good break. Uh, welcome back. You're getting back into the routine, getting up early, getting ready. It takes a little while to get you adjusted again. So it's okay. You guys will get there. You'll get more awake. <laughs> I see some of you guys in the morning. You still look like you're sleeping. But you guys are getting back on, back on track. Uh, so this week, we are continuing with our internet safety lessons and also our typing. So what we're gonna do first is we are learning about the uh, shift key. So the shift key can help you to make a letter capital or uppercase, right? So instead of using the caps lock, which is another button, which I'm sure some of you guys use to turn the letter from small to big, you can use the shift key. So let's watch this little video that they have um, for you guys. And then I'll tell you about the lessons that you're gonna do this week. Have you ever wondered where the name for the shift key came from? Back in the days before computers, the shift key would actually cause a mechanical movement or shift in the parts of the typewriter. Before adding the shift key, typewriters were only able to type capital letters. While there are no mechanical movements when we press the shift key on a modern keyboard, the name is still around. These days, not only can you type capital letters using the shift key, but you can also type punctuation like the exclamation point and question mark. You can even perform special functions on your computer, like highlighting text without having to use a mouse. It's a pretty helpful and powerful key. You may have noticed that there are two shift keys on your keyboard. Take a second and have a look. There's one on both the right and left sides of the bottom row. This will help you keep your hands in the right position when using the shift key. To type a capital letter, first think about which hand should type that letter. Now, hold the shift key with the pinky on the opposite hand, Press the letter key at the same time and then let go of both keys. It might sound tricky at first, but you'll get the hang of it. Just follow the on-screen hand and keyboard guides and you'll become a shift key master. Just one more thing. While you could hit the caps lock key each time you need to type a capital letter, tap the letter and then tap the caps lock key again, that definitely isn't the best way to go about it. If you need to type many capital letters in a row, go for the caps lock key. Otherwise, shift is your best bet. Remember to take your time and be patient. You'll be typing capitals like a pro in no time. Okay, so that is our shift key. So you guys are going to be using that. So in your lessons, you'll have to pay attention because it'll have like a lowercase letter and then an uppercase. And so when you see the uppercase or the capital, you need to make sure you use the shift key and press the letter. Um, so you're going to be doing lessons 138 through 145 this week. Um, and so that's your typing. Okay, so let's move along now. We're going into our, let me put this into a presentation, our digital citizenship lessons. So our internet safety. And this week, we're learning about digital trails. So, oh, I know about digital trails. You know, um, I make a lot of tracks. 
I make tracks in the house because I like to play in the mud and then I get them all over my paws. And then guess what happens? I get it all over the house. And then Mrs. Erica gets really mad at me because she says that she has to clean up all the mud all over the floor. And it's really a lot of work for her. Um, yes, those are definitely not the kind of tracks we want, right? You, have you guys have ever been outside when it's really muddy and wet and then you come in the house and you make wet footprints all over the floor and then, and then it's a big mess, right? Um, that's not the kind of tracks or footprints that we're talking about today. We are talking about the tracks and the footprints that are on the internet. Um, so whenever you go online or you use the internet, Whatever you type in, whatever you do, whatever you share, wherever you have an account, like for a game or something, that is all part of your digital footprint. And so a footprint, if you've ever gone to the beach before and you put your foot in the sand and you can get a nice footprint, right? Um, that's not this, but it is like, imagine making a footprint in the internet right, where things about you are stored on the internet. And that's part of your digital footprint. And so it's really important to know what types of information is okay to have in your digital footprint and what types of information is not okay. And so it's kind of similar to, if you remember a couple of weeks ago, we learned about private information and what we should not share with people. Uh, and so it's, it's along the same thing except this time we're thinking, gosh, this is gonna be part of our footprint that's online. So we need to be really careful. A trail, right, is a path or a track that someone can follow. So the more information that is about you on the internet that you share, pictures, videos, things that you type and stuff, um, comments and things like that, as you guys get older and you get, maybe you get more accounts that you can use on your own, they make a trail, a trail about you. And that is stored on the internet and it never goes away. That's why it's so important to ask yourself, what is in my trail, right? And what is okay to be in my trail for other people to see? So let's watch this little video about following the digital trail to help, just help you understand this better. And then we will come back and talk about it. I just don't know where all these prints are coming from. It's a mystery. Whom do they belong to? You know, there are some footprints that you just can't erase. What do you mean? I'm talking about something we all do. We all leave footprints online. They're called digital footprints. Every time you go online to play a game, type an email, or search the internet, you leave a trail. Really? I'm online all the time sharing things. I play online, I post online, I submit and send things online almost every day. Well, since you're online a lot, you have footprints all over the place, and it's really hard to erase these footprints. You mean, I can't just clean them up? No, it doesn't work like that. How does it work? Our digital footprint can get really big really quickly, so we need to pause and think when we're online. We need to be safe, responsible, and respectful. Wow, so what should I be careful about not sharing online? Never share private information like your full name, address, telephone number, your age or birthday, or even your school. I guess that makes sense, but what's okay to share then? I share personal information, just not private information. I keep my full name and address to myself, but I feel safe sharing stuff like my hobbies and my favorite things. Okay, I think I've got this. I may have a big footprint online, but I need to make sure what I'm sharing is safe, responsible, and respectful. You got it. It still doesn't solve the mystery of these muddy footprints, though. Aha! Case closed. Remember to pause and think online. If you're not sure what to do, ask a trusted adult first. How big is your digital footprint? Okay. 
So hopefully that helped you guys a little bit to see how it's not about um, footprints that the puppy makes, right? So you're telling me it's not about my footprints? No, no, it's not. It's about the things that you share on the internet, right? So a digital footprint, this is what it really is, is a record of what you do online, including the sites that you visit, the things that you share, right? So anytime you go online and you're typing in whatever it is that you're typing in Google, guess what? They keep a record of that. And that's part of your digital footprint. And as you get older, uh, in upper elementary, middle school, we'll be talking a lot more about digital footprints because they can really, really, they can really hurt your future or help your future. Because when you want to go to college and get a job, everything about you that's on the internet, if somebody does a search and they find out things about you, you want to make sure they find out good things, right? And they know the good things about you and not finding out things that are too private or things that maybe you wouldn't want to share with anybody. Um, and so that's why we start learning about it at a young age, because for you guys, it's really more about the safety part of it, that you don't want anything in your digital footprint that's too private, right? And so we're going to look at a few, um, some, uh, some of our animal friends that have their, we're going to look at their digital footprints and we're going to see if it looks like it's safe, or is it unsafe, okay? Um, so what information does feet suggest not sharing online? Do you wanna read it, puppy? Um, he says, don't share the full name or address or phone number. Yeah, or your age or your birthday or your school name. We don't want these as part of your digital footprint. We don't want anybody to be able to identify you. That means they can find you. They know where you live. They know where you go to school. That's private information. Please do not share that on the internet with anybody. And if, if somebody's asking you for that, you get an adult right away, right? And you never give that information out. So that's a number one safety rule that we talk about. I think we talk about it every week, but it's just because it's so important to protect you guys while you're online. Because I know that you guys are spending a lot more time with devices through the COVID season. And so that's why we really have to focus on this to keep you guys safe, right? So private information is information about you that can be used that people can identify you. Again, they can know where you live. They can know where you go to school. That's private information. You do not tell that to people on the internet. So what information does Feet think is okay to share? Do you want to say it, puppy? Um, our hobbies, our interests, our favorite foods and music and things like that. Yeah, of course. Those are things that it's okay to share as a digital footprint because they can't really, they don't, they won't be able to find you or identify you because anybody can like playing basketball or reading or whatever, right? That's not something that is private. So we're going to take a look now. Let me pull it up. We're going to look at some animal tracks. Let me see if I can make it a little bit bigger. Okay. Shut that. Okay. So here we go. So let's take a look. We have this is our first friend. This is Ellie Electra Elephant. And where does Ellie Electra Elephant live? This is what she, guess what she put inside of her profile on the internet. One, two, three, Waterhole Lane, Peanuts, Ohio. <gasps> that does not sound safe. She gave her full address. That's, that's definitely not a safe thing to do. Yeah, that's, hmm, I don't know. That's definitely not safe. Birth date, February 21st, 2010. She gave her full birthday. No, no, that is a big no, no. Username, gray toes, password, bamboo. She actually gave, put her password online. Favorite hobby, ice skating. Favorite photo, there's a photo of her. Okay, so we're looking at her information that she's sharing online, her digital trail her digital footprint, and we're seeing a lot of private information in it. So we're kind of thinking, yeah, I don't think she's being so safe. Let's take a look at Mervyn Maisel Mouse, and let's see what he did. Where you live. Mouse hole. Okay, he lives in a mouse hole. We don't know where the mouse hole is, so that seems okay. 
pet's name, Carl the Caterpillar. So he has a pet named Carl the Caterpillar. Secret, my brother and I fight all the time. Look, they're fighting over the cheese. They're fighting. Favorite food, cheese. Favorite photo. And look, there's the favorite photo. So it's interesting. We look at Mervyn and we're like, hmm, his digital tracks are pretty good. Like nobody can really find him through those tracks. They, the mouse hole could be anywhere. Anybody could have a pet caterpillar. Anybody could fight with their brother over cheese. Anybody could love cheese, right? So I wonder which of our two animal friends is making better choices with their digital footprint. Um, I think it's definitely Mervyn because he didn't really give anything private. He didn't share any private information. Yeah, he didn't share any private information. So this is what you guys are going to do. You're going to fill in this chart. So it says, whose full name do you know? Mervyn the mouse or Ellie the elephant? It was Ellie the elephant, right? Because remember, look what Ellie did. Ellie said that it's Ellie Electra elephant, right? And so we knew what her full name was. Let's take a look at the next question. Whose house could you find? So do you remember puppy? Um, yeah, it was Ella the elephant because she gave her full address. Yeah, she gave her full address. And whose birthday do you know? Same, Ellie, she gave her birthday. And whose username and password do you know? Ellie, she gave it to us. I don't know why she did that. That is so unsafe. Yeah. Who let out a secret on the internet? Uh, Mervyn did. Yeah, Mervyn did. And that was okay because anybody could fight with their brother. So, and which animal can you describe better from his or her photo? So let's look at the photos. So Mervyn just put a picture of trees and mountains, but then Ellie put a picture of Ellie in the picture. So who could you find out more about? Probably Ellie, right? <clears throat> and especially nowadays with all these, if some of your parents might have like Facebook or Instagram. You could even put the place of where your picture is. And I mean, then somebody knows where you were. So I mean, you have to think, is that really safe, right? Um, so who can the detectives find out more about and why? What do you think? Of course, Ellie. She gave them everything. I don't know why she did that. We could find her house. We could find everything about her. Yeah, we could find everything about her. Is there anything that Ellie or Mervyn posted that could be a problem for them? Oh, I think we already answered that. Well, for Ellie, definitely giving out her username and password, you never give that information to anybody, except the parent, not even a best friend. That's private information, your address, your birth date. So Ellie definitely could have could be causing some problems by sharing that information. So then the last thing it asks you to do is draw a picture of something that is okay to share about yourself on the internet and write one thing that is not okay to share. So you guys could draw a little picture, maybe like a favorite thing that you like to do, a hobby or food, and then write down one thing that you should not share. So you could write birth date, address, full name, school name, whatever you guys wanna write, okay? So that's gonna be your assignment for this week um, is to practice going through. So I know we just went through it together, but you can go through it yourself at home again and then fill out the answers to the questions. And it'll be good practice for you as you start thinking about your own digital footprint. What types of things do you share online? And what types of things do you do online that are part of your tracks, right? And your trail and make sure that you're being safe. Okay, guys. So I'll print this out. I'll give it to you guys. I'll also email it to your parents, whichever way you wanna do it. If you would rather write on it, you want to try typing on it. It's up to you. And then um, don't forget to do your typing lessons this week. Okay, guys. Um, and then we'll see you next time. All right. Goodbye, guys. Don't forget if you come across any dinosaur bones at any exotic pet shops or anything, um, you could bring them in for me. Okay. That would be so amazing. Um, I miss you guys and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.